In this video, we're going to walk through a short direct material variance problem. For the month of June, Glacier Peak Outfitters had planned to produce 2,200 mountain parkas. So when it puts together its planning budget, we would use 2,200 for our level of expected sales. It has the following direct material standards for fiber fill in its mountain parka. One tenth of a kilogram of fiber fill per parka at $5 per kilogram. Last month, 210 kilograms of fiber fill were purchased to make 2,000 parkas. So our actual level of production of 2,000 parkas is what we will use to calculate or prepare our flexible budget. The materials cost $1,029. Let's begin by calculating our total overall variance. To do that, we need to complete our planning budget. Again, we originally planned to produce 2,200 parkas, and we have a standard of one-tenth of a kilogram of fiber fill for, per parka, which means we would have expected to use 220 kilograms of fiber fill. So we're going to take our standard quantity of 220 kilograms of fiber fill, multiply it by our $5 per kilogram standard price, to get an original planning budget of $1,100 for direct material cost. We actually end up spending $1,029 for fiber fill, which gives us a $71 total variance. And in this case, the variance is favorable since we spent less on fiber fill than we originally planned. The next step, though, is to break this total variance down into three components, a price variance, a quantity variance, and an activity variance. If you recall, the first step is to complete our flexible budget. What would we have budgeted to spend given that we actually produced 2,000 units? So we're going to take our 2,000 units, multiply it by one-tenth of a kilogram of fiber fill per parka, which means we would expect it to use 200 kilograms of fiber fill. 200 kilograms at a $5 per kilogram price gives us a standard allowed of $1,000. When we compare this to our actual expenditures of $1,029, we see we have a $29 spending variance. And that spending variance is unfavorable since we spent more than we should have spent to produce our actual level of production of 2,000 parkas. Our activity variance, on the other hand, is $100 and it's favorable. Why is it favorable? Because originally we expected to spend $1,100 on fiber fill, but because we produced 200 fewer parkas, our revised or expected uh, cost of producing 2,000 parkas is less. And anything that reduces our cost or increases our bottom line net income is considered a favorable variance. Let's go ahead now and break down our spending variance into two, its two components, which is the price variance and the quantity variance. We'll begin by calculating the actual price we paid for, for fiber fill. We can take the total cost of $1,029, divide it by the actual quantity to get an actual price. Let's go ahead then and calculate our actual quantity of 210 kilograms. What would we have expected to pay had we paid our $5 per kilogram standard price? we would have expected to pay $1,050. The first thing we can notice or observe about our price variance is that it would be $21 and it's going to be favorable since our $4.90 per kilogram actual cost is less than we originally budgeted. And we can also see that this price or this favorable price variance could have been calculated by taking our 10 cents per kilogram savings, multiplying it by the 210 kilograms that we actually purchased. Our quantity variance is $50 and it is unfavorable. Why? Because it should have taken us 200 kilograms to make 2,000 parkas and it took us 210 kilograms to make our parkas. And that's that 10 kilogram uh, difference multiplied by the $5 standard price. In terms of interpreting our variances, we need to be careful. We could, and typically we look to a production manager to when we evaluate a qu 
quantity variance, and in this case, unfavorable. The people in production seem to have used more fiber fill than was warranted or planned. But this might be because we had more or we had a lower quality fiber fill and we had more waste. And perhaps it was the purchasing manager who, seeking a better deal, a 10 cent saving, purchased poorer quality fiber fill that resulted in more waste. On the other hand, the purchasing manager might be doing a good job and we just have problems in production. Our production um, design isn't up to speed or isn't up to standard and we have more waste than we would have expected. Our variances, again, don't give us answers, but they point us in directions and give us questions to ask. Another possible relationship is that we are experiencing some production dif difficulties. We're having lots of wastes and machinery is breaking down, and that explains our unfavorable quantity variance. And perhaps it also explains why our actual level of production was less than our planning budget. Once we realized we were having production problems, we shut down the line to try to address our usage of excess material or fiber fill, and that resulted in an favorable activity variance. Again, our variances don't give us answers to questions, but they provide us with starting points for asking questions.